For today's episode, I am joined by Sandra Hinojosa Ludwig. She is the author of the book, Chica, Why Not? How to Live with Intention and Manifest a Life that Loves You Back. Hola, I'm Jesenia Bocanegra, and I'm a photographer turned marketing strategist who took a leap of faith and moved 3,000 miles away from home with one camera and one heavy suitcase filled with dreams. In this show, I share a variety of tips, tactics, and candid conversations to help you grow and up-level your business with purpose and joy, one action item at a time. So get comfortable and let's get started. This is the Focus and Bloom Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Focus and Bloom podcast. I'm your host, Jessenia, and in this show, we share a variety of tips and tactics to help you grow and up-level your business with purpose and joy. So if you like content like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube or to your favorite podcast platform so that you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. For today's episode, I am joined by Sandra Hinojosa Ludwig. She is the author of the book, Chica, Why Not? How to Live with Intention and Manifest a Life that Loves You Back. But before we dive into today's episode, let me tell you a little bit more about the book. So for those who feel stuck in life, who don't see a way forward, who don't believe they deserve to claim their dreams, Sandra Hinojosa Ludwig has one question. Chica, why not? With this book, you will find all the tools you need to accept that the life of your dream is not only within reach, it is your right. So in this book, she guides you through her six-step program for manifesting the life you want, addressing career, family, love, wealth, and health. She gently breaks down the most common excuses that people make that hold them back, inviting you to practice self-compassion while you overcome your own limiting beliefs. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's episode with Sandra Hinojosa Ludwig. Sandra, welcome, bienvenida to the Focus and Bloom podcast. How are you? I'm doing very good. Muchísimas gracias. Well, let's see a little bit about me. I was born in Mexico City, grew up in Monterey. I... You know, I follow the path that I was always told was the path I should follow, like go and get um, an engineering degree, eventually, you know, get a job and eventually did a master's in the United States. So something about me, I've actually lived in five countries wow. around the world and um, did my master's in the United States, went back to work. And, you know, I just kept feeling like I wasn't living up to my potential I wasn't living up to this dream that everybody sold me that was like if you graduate from university get a job get a boyfriend eventually you're going to be happy and I just kept thinking okay I'm missing something here because this is not happening I'm not feeling this happiness everybody told me and it took me a while actually to figure out what was behind it because at, at the beginning I thought well, it got to be what's around me. If I keep changing what's around me, eventually I land in a place where everything will come together and I'll be happy, right? You know, 10 cities later, like I'm moving constantly. Um, I realized maybe, maybe it is me. I don't know. And that was the moment I think that I'm a huge believer that when you put this question out there, like what else is there? Like I need help. The universe was nothing more than to reply. And, and I think that was that was the beginning of it for me. I, I reached out to a friend and I said, you know, I cry all the time. And I don't know if that's normal. And she's like, Sandra, you want to see my therapist? She gave me her therapist number. And then it, it all happened like within like three months, to be honest. I um I was working from home at one time which was so weird because I was working manufacturing at the time. So you don't work at home, you work in the plant. And it was 2006 too, like people didn't work at home back then. And then I was um, watching this show, um, or the Oprah show, and she had all the guests from The Secret. And they started saying, you know, you can create your own reality. I'm like, what? And I remember that night, I went and looked for the movie, watched the movie, um, the person that I identified the most with was uh, Esther Hicks, Esther and Jerry Hicks. Um, and then I went on, on their website that night and look it up and I'm watching videos and I'm like, oh my God, what? And, um, and sure enough, they were going to be in my town like a few weeks later. Um, so I lived at the time in Toronto, Canada, and these guys live in Texas. Oh. And it was like, they were doing this tour and they were going to be in, in my hometown. I bought 
tickets. I arrived so early. I was like row two. And the whole weekend I was just writing everything they said. And that was the beginning of it all because they they were the first ones to expose me to this idea that you can be, do, and have anything you want and that you can manifest it. And that was the beginning of it. So that was 2006. And, you know, since then, my, my path has continued to grow and I continue to learn new and better ways to connect with myself, to raise my energy. And, um, and yeah, that's it. 2016, I left the corporate w- world. Uh, I had um, what I consider a successful career. And and then I I started, you know, I became a coach in 2015. And uh, now I'm getting my somatic experience practitioner certification. And it's just been a beautiful journey. The book came out in last year, in April. So it's almost a year old. <laughs> and um, yeah, so in 2018, I decided that... Um, Well, every year I take a class. I try to take a class about something I've never done before to kind of just keep exploring and testing. And so 2018, I took the writer's workshop from Hay House and you get to submit your book proposal at the end. So I submitted mine. I was actually looking at it yesterday, December 23rd, 2018. And they bought my book and uh, yeah, the rest is history. So my book is really talking about that journey of, you know, how do you manifest and then how do you overcome the things that are keeping you from allowing this well-being into your experience? Because I really believe our, our natural way of being is allowing. It's just allowing good things in. And when you're not allowing, it's because there is something that is keeping you preoccupied, something that's taking away your your attention from where it needs to be so the second part of the book is really about that it's about how you bring yourself back to this place of allowing i love that so it's uh i up until like maybe even a few years ago uh i never heard had heard of the term law of attraction or even just manifesting i just knew that deep down it's like if that you are attracted that you are energy and that you are attracting energy so if you were gonna go into the job or in a job interview and you were like i'm not gonna get this job position you know what to myself i would say you know what i don't even i shouldn't even go because i'm already saying i'm not gonna get it so why waste my time why waste their time you know all that stuff and i really it was just like, just like that. I, I wouldn't, I really didn't know that I was attracting something or not. Um, and up until recently where I, I, I read the, the concept of the law of attraction and manifesting and how you just by setting intentions, you know, the universe will provide for you. It's, yes. and it's a uh, Paulo Coelho in his book, the, the alchemist, he said, when, when yeah. you really want something, the universe will conspire for you to get it it opened my mind to like, wow, this is, this is a brand new concept of, of, of just seeing life. And, you know, we've been through just before the start of our conversation, we were talking about, you know, just current events, which is, we're living in a very troubling, difficult times. And, you know, we still, within everything that's happening, we have our own personal life, right? So like, how can we, how can we manifest a life that brings us joy, even, you know, with things that are happening and there's so much that we can control, but there's also things that we cannot control. We need to allow that. So, okay. I am so excited to get into this book. So this is Chica, why not? I am halfway through your book and I love it. And it's, it's such, I feel like I'm having, I'm having a conversation with a friend and you're just telling me this. (laughs) It's such a fun (laughs) read. And so that's, you, you knew that something was off. And you knew that something needed to change. So you figured your environment needed to change. So you moved different places. When yeah. was it? And I, and I know you also just mentioned that you were t- taking different classes to sort of like stay creative and do different things, which I think is such a cool thing to do, regardless of anything of what your profession is. But when was it that you felt like, okay, stop, Sandra, I need to go inside. Like, when was that aha moment that helped you realize that you can, in fact, manifest a happy life? I think the first clue, the very, very first clue, and I talk about it in my book, was we had this um, 
disparity at work. I used to work for this large multinational company. I, I'm a technical person, so I've always worked in R&D. And they had this party. And we had a new president at the time. Everyone was drinking. He was buying drinks for everybody. So I didn't bring my car because, you know, I didn't want to drink and drive. So I didn't bring my car. Well, long story short, this party was like on the other side of Toronto. And it was going to cost an arm and a leg to get a taxi back home. And it was so late that transit was, was just like too far in between that I couldn't get it. Right. So there was a bunch of people that were going downtown for, um, you know, to continue the party. So I'm like, oh, great, because from downtown, my tax is going to be only like 20 bucks as opposed to 50, right? So I got in the car with them. Everyone is so drunk and everyone is having a good time. The person driving was human resources that she hadn't drank. And she she didn't have anything to drink because she was human resources. That was perfect. (laughs) And next to me was the um, chief financial officer. And he starts telling me how amazing the new president is. Which, by the way, he's still my friend. The new, the, the president guy, he's still my friend. And he's like, oh, my God, this guy is so amazing. Oh, he's amazing. And he just kept going and going. And um, obviously, I'm thinking, okay, you're very drunk, whatever. <laughs> um, but then he said something that I was like, huh. He said, this guy used to be a junior marketer, like a junior marketing manager. And he used to complain about everything. He used to complain about jobs he had, jobs he didn't have, people he worked with, people he didn't work with, about absolutely everything. And then one day he stopped complaining. And five years later, he was the president of the company. And at the time, I remember I was so stuck at work. I felt like nothing I did. You know, I really wanted to get promoted. In my mind, I was like ready to get promoted. In my mind, I was doing way more than everybody else. But I never got even the opportunity to interview. Or if I got interview, all I got was, you're not ready. Without any specific of what was happening, right? And then he said that. And I'm like, huh. You know, one of those things that you don't know what it means, but you know there's something there. And it just keeps in your head. Yeah. Especially because at the time, I was actually quite famous for complaining. I complained about absolutely everything. So the moment he said that, I was like, you know, like that thing in TikTok, is it me? Am I the drama? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that drama. <laughs> so that was my thought. I'm like, is it me? Like, what's going on? And it was just the kind of thing that stayed in my mind. And then, you know, it was it was like six weeks later when I watched the movie of The Secret. So that kind of confirm what I had the first belief and it's actually so funny because one of the first things I manifested was a job change so it wasn't a job it wasn't a job um, promotion but it was a change and it was with a whole different team and I remember thinking I'm gonna test it because um, I used to work in the pet food side of the business and I moved to the right side of the business Uh, so it was a completely different team and I thought I'm gonna test this I'm going to see if it is me. And I went above and beyond trying to be nice to people, trying to be collaborative, trying to be constructive. And it was night and day. People loved me. People wanted to work with me. People, if they didn't see me in a room where decisions were being made, they were like, where is Sandra? Sandra should be here. I even had someone from Human Resources reach out to me, a different person say, Sandra, I just want to say, I don't know what happened, but you you changed so much. And that was the beginning of it. Like I did get promoted. I ended up going to Europe to an assignment. I ended up leaving that company for an even bigger team, bigger job, my dream job in the in the food industry. So it was the beginning of it all. But that was it. When the guy said he stopped complaining and he was the president. And my first thought was like, maybe it is me. Maybe it is me. I love I love that you're saying that that you know that's when you realize that maybe it's you and and 
oftentimes we're yeah. just blaming everybody, right? And and I'm fine. Uh, yeah. It's not me. It's it's not me. It's you. <laughs> Instead of like, it's yeah, me. everything would be better if you change. Everything would be better change. if you change. Right, right. But the yeah. thing is, we can't control how people act and react and what they do. We can't control how we act and how we can react and what we do. So a lot of so my this audience in, in this podcast is mostly. Um, mostly female and they're in the creative business or solopreneur. So, uh, and many of them are in that pivoting moment of either I just changed careers or I'm about to, or I think about, I'm thinking about pivoting and changing careers entirely. Some of them have pivoted because of the pandemic, because of the pandemic. So yeah. as a result, um, so it's like, what now, what do I need to do? And, and, you know, it's, I think, having that mindset of sort of looking, looking in, in a mirror, right? Like looking at yourself, looking at what can you do to improve yourself? Not that you, you need to change to become a different person. It's like, how can you become the best of who you are? And yes. And that's what I always say. It's never about fixing ourselves or changing ourselves. It's actually about becoming more of who we are. Exactly. Because I mean, we all have a special gift, whatever that is. And it could be, you know, listening, could be writing, could be really being really great at inventing things or being great at math or cooking the most delicious, delicious food. But it's a gift that you can give to other people. And as a business owner, you have a gift within that service and what, or the, the creation of your product. So it's like, how can you, how can you look at yourself and, and improve who you are not not by changing you, but like really becoming the best of you so that all your talents can be shared to through the world through people and you can serve and that you you can give something back to you know to the world to the universe in your book you talk about six steps to creating a life with intention uh, but you divide them into two <laughs> phases one is the creativity and earlier on you mentioned that the second part of the book is the growth and you do mention that the growth is the harder part that the the, the portion where we typically kind of tend to leave to the side. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah. And, you know, I think we were having this discussion earlier on too, which is, I really believe that our natural way of being is allowing, is allowing well-being. I mean, if we literally couldn't think about anything, well-being will be natural to us. That is our natural way of being. That is how we were created. And, but then life happens. And we learn to disallow, you know, when we are babies, we obviously, you know, also we don't have a lot of cognitive <laughs> ability at the time, but, you know, life was designed in such a way that life starts providing from us, even for us, even when we are this little, right? And the idea is that that, has, that continues through our lifetime. But then life happens and we disconnect ourselves from this source of well-being. We disconnect ourselves from this knowledge that things are always working out for us. Things are always turning out right for us. So the first three steps that I des um, describe in the book is how do you intentionally manifest? Because we're manifesting all the time. Even having this conversation, we have a point of attraction that is either allowing or not right. allowing well-being, right? So how do you make it intentional? So I talk about clarity, you know, becoming very clear on what you want and then taking a step back and say, okay, why do I want that? How am I going to feel when I have it? And that's the feeling that you connect with because then you're giving the universe, the universe permission to bring it to you. And also you remove a lot of resistance right. when you're not spending all of your time in the how. I really believe the how belongs to the universe. And then the second one, which is collaboration, which is how this collaboration happens, you know, you have to match the, the energy of your desire and then um, commitment, which I believe action is as strong of an attractor as you being happy all the time. So basically, now that you told the universe what you want, watch out because inspiration is going to come your way and you need to act on that inspiration. You need to take the steps because that's the universe inviting you to meet to meet it what it is, you know, one of my favorite saying from Joseph Campbell is take one step towards the gods and the gods are going to take 10 steps towards you. But you got to take that step. Chills. I, oh I, I, isn't, I love Joseph Campbell phrases. <laughs> but even what you said, not just Joseph Campbell's phrase, but what you said, like inspiration will come to you. 
And, and I yes. love that you're talking about clarity, collaboration, and commitment. And, and commitment, you know, yes. Putting this into putting this into perspective from a business standpoint, for you to connect with your audience, with, with your with your client, you need to be clear on what you want to do. What is that gift? What is it that you want to offer? You want to because if you're not clear, then the message that you're going to be putting out there is going to be all over the place and people will really understand and won't connect. So, you know, you're, you yes. need to be clear, but not just, you know, not in just in your personal life, but clear in what you want to put out there, clear in what your business, your professional goals are, because you're going to put a message out there. And like you said, we're always manifesting, whether we're conscious about always. it or not, we are manifesting. So, and you know, we have that clarity and then we, then from there we go ahead and and you know we communicate with with the people that we want to with the, the audience that we want to connect to connect with and and then collaborate and that's why you know it's really great to to be open to either networking or or meeting new people doing podcasts like this like before the we start recording i was telling you that i really enjoy podcasting because i love interviewing people because i get to meet new people. I get to learn. I use this as a learning opportunity because I don't know everything. So it's, it's a really great to connect. And I've been able to build really good relationships just online <laughs> throughout the pandemic. Yes. So it's just like, you know, being able to, to, to look at yourself and look and, and see, okay, get some clarity, like you mentioned, be able to, to collaborate and then, and, 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 and be committed to doing that. The consistency is what's going to help you. Yeah, and keep showing up. And I know that, you know, there is no bad or wrong decisions. There is only decision, you know, good or bad decisions. There is only decisions that are going to get you closer to what you want and away from what you want. And the good thing is that nothing's broken. If you realize that you took a step that is taking you away from what you want, then you take a different step. You know, sometimes we, and I, I can speak for myself, we agonize so much about decisions when it's as simple as then make another one right then make another right. one and then another thing too you know contrast is always going to happen in life it will always right. happen you know contrast is the beginning of of desire which leads to expansion so contrast is always going to be in our lives and that's why i tell people connect with your why connect with how you're going to feel when you have it because life will happen inevitably will happen you know, coronavirus happen, things will happen. But by you staying connected to your why, you're giving permission to the universe to bring you that in a way that will be magical for you, even regardless of what's happening around it. Let's say, for example, that I talk about in my book that one of the things that you love is uh, gymnastics. And you're like, well, I can't even do a car <laughs> well. And, you know, I'm 40 now, so how am I going to do this? Well, what is it about the sport that you love? Is it that, you know, the strong body? Because you're going to still get a strong yes. body somehow. Is it, you know, the love of the technique and everything? I mean, people write blogs about gymnasts and about the beauty of it and about the beauty of the sport. Some people become international judges, right? Um, or maybe it is the, you know, the fact that you have a team that supports you. I mean, maybe you... You want to sign up to a hockey league. I'm in Canada, right? So a hockey <laughs> league. And then you get that same feeling. Like, try to break down exactly what is it about that dream that you love so much. And be open to inspiration mm -hmm. of how you can fulfill that dream. Because sometimes, I, I just did a, um, a TikTok a couple of days ago, which is like, stop trying to control your manifestation because you are getting in the way of it. When you say it has to be this way at this place, at this time, you are literally putting everything that you desire in a box and telling the universe, give me that. And not only are you adding a lot of resistance yeah. because now it's like, why is this doesn't happen this way? Who is it going to bring it? But also, we, like you say, we don't know everything. And normally, we will desire what we right. know. But what if there is something you don't know that's a hundred times better than what you know? It happened to me. So I, when the book was going to come out, I pitched to a lot of um, publications, you know, freelance authors. And I found this freelance author that was right. And she writes for a variety of magazines. But I went for 
you know, one of the magazines and I say, hey, I think this, you know, an article about this will be great for the magazine. And then she interviewed me and everything. And I was really excited. And then when it came out, it came out in Me Too, which wow. had actually like, I don't know, a hundred times more followers than the initial one that I had pitched. You know, it's, it's just giving permission to the universe that it will happen. And then the second part of the book that we that we were talking about is really, I call it curiosity, compassion, and continuity. And that is about you're going to be living your life. You're going to, you know, having clarity, collaborating with the universe, taking action, and then you're going to feel anxiety or you're going to feel stuck or you're going to feel something that does not feel good. So curiosity is going in and be like, okay, What's the story I'm telling myself right now that is creating this feeling? Like I was talking when my book came out, about two weeks before the book came out, I started waking up at two in the morning with anxiety, like literally my body nuts. And I'm like, what's going on? And I realized one of the stories I was telling myself was you should be doing more. You should be working harder. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's two in the morning. Why is it two in the morning? You should be sleeping. But... I know, but then I got to work through that story, which is, you know, I always say it's like an onion, right? There's a story that's at the surface and then the story that's in the middle. And usually the story in the middle is I don't deserve, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable. And, and you know, you should be doing more. It's a story of I'm not good enough. Right, right. I'm not, I'm not, you know, enough. And, um, and then once you discover the story, you just know that that's a part of you that it still feels very vulnerable when exposed to big right. dreams. And and then you just love that part right. of you because that part of you just wants to be told it's, okay. it's going to be okay. I'm, I'm the adult in the room. I'm taking care of this. It will be okay. And then continuity is making this a constant review of where am I in my day. You know, eventually over time, you will get to a place where your your natural state is feeling good. And when you're not feeling good, it becomes very obvious. It's like, huh, something's happening right now. What's going on? But then at the beginning, when your natural state is not feeling good, you know, it's it's constantly being like, okay, what am I thinking right now? What am I telling right now? Why am I feeling so upset? Why am I feeling so stuck? Why am I feeling so inadequate? And just constantly doing that. And that's what I call growth because eventually you will get to a place where feeling good just becomes second nature. Yes, I love that. I love that. And, and sometimes in that curiosity phase, sometimes you need to be okay with taking that leap, leap of faith. And, and sometimes you need to trust your gut. And sometimes you need to know that it's going to work out, that maybe you don't know the entire manuscript of how it's going to plan out, but you need to trust and, and see that yeah. and know and, be, and understand that Things will, you you will get, the universe will provide for you. Yeah, and sometimes trust feels very out of reach for yes, many that of is us, true. especially if you grew up in an environment where you com- constantly have to fend mm-hmm. for yourself because there were there wasn't a lot of people around you to help you. But in those times, that's where compassion comes in, which is just just love yourself through this. You know, if there is nothing else you can do, then at least love yourself through this. Support yourself through this. And also, n- not underestimate reaching out to the people that have earned the right to be oh, in your yes, life. I like that. Not everybody, but the people that have earned the right to be in your life, to be someone close to you. It's okay to reach out to. You know, I've been doing a lot of studies in trauma lately, and our, our natural first step when we're facing a threat is reaching out mm-hmm. to people. That's, that's the first thing that we do. It's, it's only when that doesn't work out or it's not available to us that we're going to fight mm-hmm. or flight. But the first thing we do is reach out to people. So find the people that have earned the right to be in your life and then trust that they are there. They already showed it to you. So keep reaching to them. Keep loving yourself through it. And eventually you will get to a place where you will feel like, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah, I think I can do this. That's beautiful. And know that today 
whatever you're doing today is the very best that you can do today. That doesn't mean tomorrow or the next day. That doesn't define you. It's today. So being present is important too. No one wakes up in the morning and says, how am I going to screw up yeah, the day exactly. today? Yeah, no. exactly. No one does that. I'm going to have the worst day of my <laughs> no. life. No one does that. We all wake up with the belief that we are going to do our best and see how things go, right? To that person that you were maybe when things didn't go as planned, that compassion when you made a decision, when you passion, because I've come to learn that, you know, the process of matching the energy of your desire is called alignment, mm -hmm. right? And that is bringing your energy up. I've come to learn that you cannot shame yourself into alignment. You can only love yourself. Ah, alignment. beautiful. Telling yourself, I should have done more. I was wrong. What's wrong with me? It's not going to make you feel no. better. Exactly. Like, you know, from a business, from, from, you know, applying it to the, to the business solopreneur, I mean, which typically, uh, could be a very, uh, lonely process because not everybody, it not is. everybody in your friend, not in your circle, everybody is a business owner or has that same aspiration, which is totally fine, but you know, it could be, it could be lonely. And sometimes you, you might have, if you have a partner, that partner may or may not be supportive of your own goal. So then, it's, you know, you're adding more stuff to the situation, which might make you doubt yourself. Like, can I do this? Am I worthy of doing it? Is it worth doing it? You know? And sometimes going back to that, to trusting you, you sometimes just need to trust your gut feeling, trust that the universe will provide. I remember a couple, um, not a couple, 10, 11, almost 11 years now. Um, so I was in, living in Puerto Rico and then I decided that I wanted a change in my life and I was content with what, with my life in Puerto Rico overall, but I, I still needed a change. I just wanted like a fresh start. And I moved to California, I moved yeah. to San Francisco and I figured, well, I was still studying photography. So that's a perfect, you know, perfect opportunity for me to, to go and move. You're still in college. So it's, you know, I, I stopped working for a whole year and, and then I'm like, okay, I know I'm going to be here for whatever length the program is. I don't know what's going to happen next. And then we'll see. Eventually life brought me to North Carolina to a place that I had no idea existed. <laughs> and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to do here, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> and in figuring it out, I've had such beautiful opportunities in pr professional and personally that if I had not trust, had not put that trust in the universe and know that something good will come out of it. I just don't know exactly what it is, but I know there's something there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I wouldn't have seen this beautiful gift that I've been given over the past 10 years of living here. So like you said, you don't know what you don't know. So if you don't trust, yeah. you don't know that, you know, if you're, if you're stuck in that mindset of this has to be this way and that's it, like in a box, you don't know what's outside the box. Maybe what's outside the box is better, but you don't know it. So you need to allow it. Yes. And it's funny you're saying this. I was having a discussion with someone recently, um, someone that I, work, that I work with, and I was saying, look, you have all of these desires, but you're putting them so tightly in a box of it has to be this way, it has to look this way. You're putting all of these walls. What if you let those walls go and you just focus on giving that anything is a possibility? Here's how I want to feel. And then just kind of open yourself to what will happen. And, um, you know, one of my favorite sayings from Abraham Hicks is life is supposed to be fun. Life is too fun, supposed to be about exploration, right? It's about to be, oops, well, not that way. Go the other way, right? And, um, and just kind of see where life takes you. You know, I always ask people three questions, especially when they say, I don't know what I want to do. I say, reconnect with who you are. And these are the three questions I always ask them. Who would you be if you knew you couldn't fail? Who would you be if you knew that you can get all of the resources that you need? Time, money, expertise. And who would you be if you didn't care what others thought of you? When you remove all of those walls, emerge as the person that you really, in your heart, are being called to be or the service that you're being called to, you know, give in the world, your gift that you're, you're being called to share with others. 
but we need to remove those walls. Sounda, that's beautiful. <laughs> I can I that yeah, that that I think that sums up. I I could totally talk about this more and I love this conversation. I am enjoying it so much. And that's a that's such a beautiful way to wrap it all up. You, you know, you need to trust, you need to believe in yourself. Um know that the the universe will provide. Be open to listening to the signs that the universe will, will be sending yeah. you every now and then. Um, sometimes they're very direct and sometimes they're just very subtle, but just being open and, and, and know that today you're doing the best that you can do today. And that will not define you. That will not define you what, what you can do tomorrow. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Sandra. Okay. Uh, before we wrap up, uh, can you let people know how they can connect with you? Where they can, where can they purchase the book? Chica, why not? <laughs> yes. People can find me in Instagram, um, Sandra Novosa Ludwig. They can find me in TikTok. Um, they can also find me in my website, sandrinovosaludwig.com. If they go to the website, they can actually get um, a free guide that I have and a free class, a free law of attraction. That is like a 30 minute class to walk you through all the um, basics of it. And then my book can be found anywhere where books are sold. So Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target. And um, yeah, it's an easy way to just start ask, asking those questions. Like I said at the beginning, is it me? <laughs> Am I the drama? <laughs> oh, I love this. Beautiful. Thank you so, so very much, Sandra. I really appreciate you taking the time to join me uh, for this conversation in the Focus and Boom podcast. And if, for those of you who are tuning in either on the podcast audio format or if you're watching us on youtube be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming episode and check out today's show notes for ways to connect with sandra and learn more about her story about what she's done and how you can connect with her as well thanks so much for tuning in and i'll catch you on the next episode thanks for tuning in on another episode of the focus and bloom podcast be sure to leave us a review on itunes so that we can continue creating more content like this and go ahead and visit today's show notes at focusandbloomstudios.com slash show notes.